Hi, I'm Jay Ruderman, and welcome to the All Inclusive Podcast Stories of Activism, Change, and Courage. This is all wrong. I say um, put mental health first because if you don't. This generation of Americans has already had enough. I stand before you not as an expert, but as a concerned citizen. Each episode, we bring you in depth and intimate conversations with inspiring individuals trying to change the world. I'm almost 45 years old. Today my age stopped when the hearts of more than 100 children stopped beating. I see no sense in life if it cannot stop the death. We're devoting a special episode today to what's happening in Ukraine. A terrible war that is devastating the country. Kiev has been rocked by massive explosions. Killing thousands. <laughs> displacing millions. As dawn broke, the sheer scale of the aftermath was revealed. Rescuers searching for survivors, pulling victims from the rubble. We all realize that this war is not only with the Russian Federation. That that's actually the war of good and evil. Today, I'm going to talk with Sergei Gamali, the governor of Khmelnytsky Oblast. Overnight, Gamali went from governing a sleepy agricultural region in western Ukraine to hosting hundreds of thousands of refugees streaming in from the east and orchestrating dangerous rescue missions to cities under siege. He's doing this while trying to keep the schools running and the tractors harvesting. The Khmelnytsky Oblast region which Gamali governs, has become a distribution hub for humanitarian aid that is vital to other parts of Ukraine. What can we do to help, I asked him. Share information about the war as much as you can, was his response. So today, we'll try to do just that. Hello. Hello, Hello. everyone. Hi, Governor. Thank you for making the time. Nice to meet you. I can speak, yeah? Yes. Because my English is not so good for... For the speaking, I uh, I will be speak in Ukrainian, and uh, I have a translator here, and she speak in English. It will be better for your ears. Hello. I want to jump right in uh, because I know that your time is valuable. I want to welcome you to All Inclusive. Uh, during this time of war and tragedy in your country and your region. I appreciate you giving me a few minutes to talk about the humanitarian situation in Ukraine and in your area. I wanted to start off by asking you, today in the New York Times, uh, Thomas Friedman wrote an op-ed in which he said that the objective of Russia is to create five to 10 million refugees and force them out of the country. What has been your experience in your region uh, in terms of refugees fleeing from the eastern part of Ukraine through your region to the countries bordering on the west? At this point, we don't have uh, Russian uh, military troops in our region because uh, the Ukrainian army are protecting Kalinsky, is protecting Kalinsky region, excuse me, and uh, the uh, Ukrainian army in the other region, like Sumy, Chernihiv, Mykolaiv, and Kiev, are not enabling the Russian troops to get into our region at the moment. And the main goal for us for now is to have a humanitarian front in here, in our region. Our region uh, is ready to welcome uh, all uh, the refugees from the uh, east that are coming uh, and that need some help. And we are ready to give them uh, homes and food and supply and everything they will need. The uh, Russian troops at the moment are trying to uh, block those refugees in their cities and enabling them to uh, receive uh, food and uh, health supply, medication, and everything they need. And uh, our goal is to get those people out of those cities like Mykolaiv, Sumy, Chernihiv, and other cities. Our main goal is uh, uh, to let those uh, people uh, come out of those cities and arrive here so we could uh, give them all the help we can. 
For this moment, uh, we are planning uh, to provide our West regions are planning to provide uh, the rest of the Ukraine uh, with the food supply because the other regions won't be able to start the agriculturing uh, season and uh, to plant uh, all the needed like seeds and bread and everything so uh, that's going to be our plan uh, to help the rest of the ukraine at this moment we believe we're going to win uh, and uh, we believe in our ukrainian army we're sure we will win this war but at this point uh, we need uh, like our region the main goal for our region is that we need to help all the refugees from the rest of the regions that are in need now. Uh, we have to help them and to help all those people who are uh, like desperate, desperate at the moment. Before the beginning of war, the Ukrainian population was uh, somewhere about 40 million people. And after the big cities like Kharkiv and uh, Mykolaiv and, and Kherson were hit, and uh, after all those people have lost their homes, Mm, uh, we realize that all those people will be coming to our region and we are ready to provide them with homes and uh, places to live and work and to stay here. And uh, our region is, uh, the population of Malinsky region is about 1,270,000 people. And at this uh, point, the Western regions are expecting... Uh, to um, uh, give homes for, you know, for 10 million people from the eastern part of the Ukraine because we are the only region that could help them. So, Governor, let me ask you, um, with so many refugees coming through, how do you handle so many people coming in and passing through, either staying or passing through your region? We're using all kinds of uh, uh, housing, which is possible at this moment, uh, to give those people uh, places to live, like schools and uh, kindergartens. And for this moment, we uh, have provided even less than 10% of the homes for the refugees that we are able to help. So out of the hundreds, even less than 10%. Common people are taking other people uh, from even from trains directly to their homes, uh, trying to help. And a lot of families are welcoming all the refugees, uh, like everyone who can help, they're trying to help and to provide homes for those people. Also, since uh, March 14th, we started... Uh, uh, the uh, educational process for the kids uh, that uh, came from the eastern part for the refugees, uh, and uh, they are uh, there are about five thousand kids, and they are coming, coming more. So we're providing them with the education. Uh, also, we have um, a field hospital for the animals. We're the only actually a region who has that because there were a lot of families or refugees who came with their like dogs and cats and other animals who, who took them uh, here. And they also were hurt during the uh, uh, bombs and uh, the invasion. So uh, we are also trying to help them. We have already made uh, 137 uh, operations uh, on those animals in order to help them as well so they could go back live in the families they came with. So, Governor, I want to commend you for, in a time of war, trying to bring a sense of normalcy uh, to your region, to people in need who are coming from eastern Ukraine, uh, to children, to provide them schools, to provide for your population and even for you know animals that are being brought. Uh, you've done a tremendous amount of work, and I'm sure you're working uh, 24 hours a day. I wonder if you could talk for a few minutes about uh, your morale um, and the morale of the Ukrainian people during this such such a difficult time. The more we are in war, the more we get united. Uh, all the Ukrainians get united. And we all realize that this war is not only with the Russian Federation. That's actually uh, the war of good and evil. And uh, uh, we are representing the rest of the world, the uh, good things in the world, the democracy, the kindness, the happiness, the 
prosperity, everything is good in the uh, modern world uh, where Ukraine is representing now. And uh, we are fighting the evil uh, that is representing in Russia uh, in the name of the whole world. And uh, we are sure that we will win this war in the name of the world and all the Ukrainians. And Ukraine is a very peaceful country. We have never invaded any other countries or any other territories. But when some other people come uh, to invade us, we are going to protect our land. We are not going to give a piece of our land to anyone else. And uh, this war is uh, uniting all the Ukrainians all together. We're going to show the rest of the world uh, that we will win this war. We have a big lines now of civil people to join the Ukrainian military. No one's hiding, no one's running. We have big lines of people who want to go and fight for Ukraine. So, Governor, I'm wondering if you could tell us what was going through your head the moment you heard that Russia invaded Ukraine. First <laughs> day, it's... Uh... Uh, first day, I couldn't believe in it. I thought it was something uh, not real. Having war in the middle of the Europe, in the heart of the Europe, having a war that will kill civil people uh, was was hard to believe. So first in the first days, it was kind of hard to, for me to believe that these things really happen. Governor, can you tell us one story of uh, that gave you hope? One thing that happened that you witnessed that you said, you know, this gives me hope in in, in what's happening and, and what my people are going through. I have those stories mostly every day when I see those uh, men are waiting in lines to go to military, uh, to Ukrainian army, or when I see the old people who don't have the money at all, they come and give the... are trying to give because I wear... Our army guys are not taking that, but they're trying to give their uh, their last money to the Ukrainian army in case they just m- might need something. Or when uh, people are calling us from all the parts of the world and uh, trying to give us some help. So those stories are like happening all all the time and every day. But I'm going to tell you one story if you want to know. We had this one case when we needed to bring some humanitarian help to one of the cities that was bombed at that moment. As a matter of fact, we have already sent more than 300 tons of those help to different cities. But at that point, we really needed a track. Uh, and the person who could take that stuff to that city. The track was supposed to go to the hot spot of Ukraine, to the city that was bombed continuously. So basically it was very dangerous for that person to go. So I called to a lot of owners of the transport companies who own those tracks and who have drivers and asked them whether any of the drivers were willing to go to that uh, city. I'm not naming the city because I don't want to say that uh, out loud, but actually the owner of the company said, okay, I will go myself. He just asked for that vest and for the machine gun, and I gave him mine, and he went to that hot spot. And he uh, brought the everything they needed and came back alive. Very emotional. Uh, Governor, um, President Zelensky has become a worldwide figure standing for freedom against tyranny and authoritarianism. Um, Have you had a chance to speak with President Zelensky during the war? Well, we are speaking constantly, either with him or with uh, his de- deputies, and uh, all the governors like me are uh, speaking to him like most every day, and because uh, he's uh, an example for us, he's staying at his place and doing what he's got to do, and we're doing our job in, in the regions as well. So, Governor, you and and your region are going through the largest humanitarian crisis in Europe since World War II, with thousands, tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people traveling through your region. What can we do? What can people outside of Ukraine do to help Ukraine in this most dire situation? 
Ну, по-перше, дійсно говорити про це. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, we really believe that economical sanctions against uh, Russia will help a lot cause uh, um, stopping their economy uh, with economical sanctions uh, we will be sure that less money will be spent on war against Ukraine. Uh, besides uh, that, we really need any humanitarian help cause a lot of cities have lost uh, their provisions and places to stay and like closing everything people need any kind of help like that besides that we're gonna need to build new homes so anything that could help with buildings uh, and building infrastructure of uh, building infrastructure and building our economics as well Uh, besides uh, we will need uh, any kind of financial help that you could do uh, because uh, we will give that to the refugees and put it into our economy. And close the sky. <laughs> if you close the sky, we could fight out all our enemies out of the Ukraine so they won't have a chance. Also, we need uh, you to share the information about war as much as you can because uh, uh, the information is very important. Everyone should know that we are in war now. That's not uh, any kind of a military operation like Putin is trying to say. It's a real war. People are dying here. And the more people know about everything's happening in Ukraine, about all the uh, people who get hurt, dying, about destroyed cities, all the information that is shared, the more people know about that, the more help out of it we will have. Well, Governor, I want to thank you for your time. I know this is a, a terribly difficult time with war and humanitarian crisis. I want to uh, commend you for your courage and bravery and, and for the bravery of the Ukrainian people uh, for what you're going through and fighting for uh, freedom, not only for your country, but for the West. Thank you so much for your time and joining us on All Inclusive today. Thank you very much. Thank you for you, for, for your helping and everything will be good and Ukraine will be the best uh, country in the uh, world <laughs> for our, our people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. All Inclusive is a production of the Ruderman Family Foundation. I'm your host, Jay Ruderman. Our show is produced by Yochai Metal, Jackie Schwartz, and Matt Littman.